Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're back with another exciting episode of Hearts of Iron 4 O Canada. And where we last left off, we had motorized the Canadian Army, and uh, in the world, in and around the world, we've got nationalist Spain closing in on absolute victory, and Japan over in the east clashing with China. We can see the Chinese have managed to hold on to Beijing. And it looks like the fighting has moved up into Japan's puppet. I'm not about to pronounce that name because I'm not good with pronunciation of heck some English or French or German names, let alone anything in Chinese or Japanese. So sorry for not pronouncing them. I think I've apologized in every video. How fitting. Anyway, uh, we're still running a little bit of a steel shortage. I don't want to devote any more of my civilian factories to trade because we only we only really have two civilian factories producing anything. Um, right now, it's building up more civilian factories, but it's going to take a while. It's telling us we're going to be finished this factory in uh, the 16th of August, 1939, which isn't all that great. Uh, what we could look to do is shift a few of our military factories over to civilian production so we can get civilian production produced faster. Um, obviously at the cost of not producing military units. I think if we were to do that, we'd take the trucks and well, well the tanks are with infantry. So... I guess we would have to take one of the truck factories and one of the infantry equipment factories away and shift that over to civilian production. Or we could cut back on production and end some trade deals. <clears throat> That's something I'm going to have to mull over and will probably take care of off screen once I come to a decision. Um, for national focuses, we're going to just keep going through the infrastructure and construction tree. So we'll get Infrastructure Effort 1 and 2, Construction Effort 3, and then probably the two research slots, but we'll see how that goes. We're kind of running out of time, so... Hmm. Or we could... <clears throat> we could shift over, too, to something like Early Mobilization. So what are we sitting at? Consumer Goods Factories at 30%. So if we switched over to Early Mobilization... That would drop down by 5%. And the, well, the construction speed of new factories would go up then. I think I done goofed. Uh, on the plus side, we'll have this group of infantry done relatively quickly, and that'll give us a full, complete core. Will it? That doesn't seem right. Four infantry. I guess I'm just going to be putting them in, in blocks of four. I don't know if I like that. Regardless, um, I'll figure out a way. Yeah, you know what? We'll probably... Well, I think... I think I've hamstrung us. We can work towards getting the production up uh, as we continue. Um, but I really want that, that Canadian military done. I don't know. We'll see where things sit once these guys come out and how I'm feeling about that. Other than that, what do we got for tech coming along? We're almost at improved machine tools, so we should probably figure out what we're going to pick after that. Very likely, some kind of industrial tech. That would be a very good idea. Speak of the devil! <clears throat> um... I would suggest some more concentrated industry. That seems like a grand old plan. All right, guys. Well, we will get this ticking on by, and I will mull over more what to do with the economy. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm probably going to lean towards inaction and general just worrying. But if I get inspired and figure out how to do this properly, which, I mean, that's even poor word choice, to do this properly, I'd have to restart in 36. We're not going to do that. We'll continue on with what we got. Because, I mean, we're still sitting all right. And our Navy's even slowly getting better, too. 
So I'm going to be back when I've got something exciting to share with you guys. See y'all in a bit. All right, we're going to enact early mobilization. Why not? We've already got conscription. We can get some mobilization going, and that should assist uh, over here. So we got one whole new factory freed up, which means we're getting this, this new civilian factory done in 38, which will then have the St. Lawrence factory have four factories instead of three, so that should get done even a little bit faster. It's certainly not a perfect solution, but it is a solution, and we're going to go with it. So that should help things out. Um, not immensely, but enough to make me feel better about myself. And really, that's all that matters. So, uh, we'll continue with our military production as is. Uh, that's good. We've got a nice stockpile built up. Well, we're going to be getting a nice stockpile built up of infantry equipment. Slowly getting all the tanks. Um, we should be replacing there though, right? Like, if we take a look at your buildup... You've got 12 light tank 2s and 48 light tank 1s. So, all right. We're working on getting that done. Uh, yeah. And so with that, I'll be back with something more exciting. See you guys in a bit. After a successful coup d'etat by the local Nazi party in Vienna, German troops have crossed the Austrian border and taken control of the country. No fighting has been reported, and the German soldiers were greeted by cheering crowds in the cities. In a speech before a massive crowd at the... Heldenplatz in Vienna, Hitler announced that the Anschluss of Austria annexing the country into Germany, the oldest eastern province of the German people shall be, from this point on, the newest bastion of the German Reich. That's what they wish! Just in time to get our industrial infrastructure done. So, let's head on over and get construction effort going. Thank you very much, and let's take a look at the state of the world. We're at 23% world tension. It's not enough to get crazy, uh, but it's also pretty clear now that uh, Czechoslovakia is next on the list. I mean, as someone with historical hindsight, we already know this, but uh, taking, a look, taking a look at the map in February of 1938 currently, it's pretty clear the Sudetenland's next. As for us, we're slowly getting the... Um, remainder of the infantry corps for, for the infantry divisions for our first corps done after that it'll be seven trucks and we'll have a full-on 12 12 split no idea if that's a good army composition or not but it's a good army composition in my head so you know that's that's just as good as any military planner in uh this time in the real world would have had sure that should work um we're also going to start probably uh, deploying out well let's see how many close air support aircraft we have we have 37 I'd like to get that to a slightly more impressive number uh, but I'd also like to start producing some strategic bombers as well so I'm not sure what my gut is going to be for the cutoff of close air support and then swapping it over to strategic bombers but it's going to be somewhere and at some point, I'm going to make the call to swap over. Uh, what else? I think that's it. I'm not going to touch production of small arms or tanks. Whew, that's going up. So, yeah, so we can build up a bit of a stockpile. Any trucks we're stockpiling are going to get dumped in as soon as these guys are done training. Although, it looks like they've got all their supplies. So, we could probably get... Our seven trucks started now. Seems like a good enough idea to me. We'll only need one round of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Southern Ontario. Lovely. We can see we've got enough equipment stockpiled already for four of these guys to start training right away. That's exciting. Um, haven't got anything like this. I'm likely not going to. We'll keep the reduced production speed while we get these worked up. I think that makes the most sense. And how's tech doing? I've started researching the improved infantry equipment because uh, it's about that time. And then once the signal company gets done, I guess one, I should redesign my trucks to use it. And then we'll have to get those guys... Uh, 
built up, but we're very, very close to having at least a core group of infantry that we can actually utilize out in the real world. Now, I had a request to possibly send in some troops to assist Republican Spain. Here's the thing with democracies. We can't send volunteers until world tension is at 50%. Um, and apparently we'd need at least 30 divisions before we could even consider sending any sort of uh, volunteer force. So I, well, I really do hope we'll get to 30 divisions uh, sooner than later. I don't think we'll get to 30 divisions soon enough to help out the Republican Spanish. So it's a lost cause. It looks like Spain is going to go fascist. Such is the way of things. It's out of our hands. But hey. Maybe we'll wind up fighting in Spain if the Nationalists join the Axis. It's a possibility. Anyway, uh, as time ticks on, I guess nine days. Can I kill nine days of just random rambling? I don't know. I guess I've already killed one, so that's... That's something. Um, what else? I guess we could talk about the general plan for when war does break out. Now, I'm of two minds. If the situation uh, along the French border is looking like uh, Germany's having some issues pushing in, we'll throw our core right onto France, right onto the front lines, probably up here in the lowlands, and um, assist with the defense of France, and also possibly the pushback into Germany. If that's not the case, and it looks like France is gonna fall pretty quickly, I think our best course of action would be to actually land in North Africa and start assisting the UK with clearing out Italy first. Now, the reason for my thinking there, and I'll just slow speed down a little bit and let it tick by while I talk, but my thinking for that is, well, I should probably, well, we could do that too. We'll need that. Um, one of the like, once you get into the situation of you want to land in Europe, obviously, if we've got an ally still there that we can, you know, drop down in ports and walk across and join a front line somewhere in their country further east, that's great. If that's not the case, then we're going to be looking for a better way in to Europe. And as you can tell by my mouse movements, I'm of the opinion that the best way to get into Europe, if you can't friendly land in France, that's a new term I've come up with, is to come in through the Mediterranean. So the way to do that would be obviously first secure North Africa, get Italy out of that continent completely, then push up through the Mediterranean, which thanks to Britain's uh, relatively all right presence in the region, especially if we include sections of Italy, should provide a relatively easy spot to land in Europe, so I'm thinking obviously we go in, we take Sicily, and do that whole thing, and from there, you know, the, the, the Italian-German border won't be as defended as, say, the Atlantic Wall or the French-German border, so I think Italy's really the belly of the porcupine, if you will, and that's going to be the best way to do it, so it's all situational dependent, 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 start making up even more words and terms. It's all dependent on the situation, so if we can safely land in Europe, we will. Um, but if if that's a no-go and it looks like Europe's a lost cause, then I think North Africa through the Mediterranean into Italy into Germany is going to be the best way to go. I'm not going to be doing anything in the Pacific. Um, my allies should have a handle on that, and I'm not really planning on doing anything. Well, I guess that's really the Pacific or Europe. That's about it. So Africa is going to be our ticket into Europe if it has to be. Uh, if we can assist on the defense of France, we will. But yeah, I personally would like to avoid um, a Dieppe-like situation. I don't think anybody wants to go through something like that, video game or not. So I'll be doing my best to avoid that. How are our troops? It looks like our armies may have come on down, so let's get you added. Oh, we're getting close. We're getting close. You've almost earned a commander and a name, Army One soon and everyone else is good good our fleets i'd really like that to be like 600 but what can you do 
And... Just take it away. We're almost done in Southern Ontario. That'll be a big help. All right, guys. I will see you... Right? We're good? We're great. I'll see you guys when something exciting happens. So one thing I should probably go over briefly while I'm actually utilizing this system is I want to take this 10th District Militia away from Winnipeg and bring him up into Southern Ontario because I'd like to have the army operating closer and when it gets time to hop on boats, I don't want to have to wait for, for a unit to cover this much territory just to then cover this much territory to hop in a boat and leave. So, um, there's two ways you can go about moving your troops around uh, allied territory or probably conquered territory as well. Uh, you can do the old-fashioned thing and you can say, Hey guys, you know, walk it. Get walking. And so they'll march and, and you know, they won't lose as much organization. They'll still lose some and it'll take them some time and they can happily march. Or what you can do is go on here for strategic redeployment. So, boom, we can turn that on, and their speed is going to go up, but as you can see, they suffer a 90% penalty to organization. What this is using is using the infrastructure of the state that they're in to travel instead of just walking. So we can get down here much quicker. They won't, when they get there though, they'll be disorganized as all hell. So you don't necessarily want to move people using the infrastructure if you're, say, shifting them right to the front and want them to fight the day they get there. But if you're moving them from, say, Winnipeg to Southern Ontario, it's probably good to put them on a train instead of have them walk across. So that's, it's one of, okay, so that's just the new strategic redeployment ways that are in the game. So there, let's not get reviewy on this. Uh, we've got some political power to change, and I think we will go with our industrial. Well, yeah, let's go with our industrial concern. Is that a good idea? Let's just check chief of army. What do we got? Old guard, probably not. Army defense, army offense. Uh, probably. Well, mm, convoy rating. That's not what we're going to be doing. Who are you? Screen attack and defense plus 10. That does sound good, Lloyd Samuel Bredner. Uh, air safety or air reformer. Air accident chances. That's not a bad idea. Accidents are a thing and reliability of your equipment plays into it. Um, I think we'll just go with the industrial concern. For now. It probably should have happened in 36, but what can you do? What can you do? Uh, yeah, so that's that's about it. We got our troops finally out of Winnipeg, coming on down into southern Ontario. Welcome, guys. Enjoy your time here. Have I got these guys set to deploy in southern Ontario? I do, and we're almost done training. So that's exciting. What else? Republican Spain is pretty much dead. I have a feeling they'll be falling within the month, probably. And uh, let's check out over in the east. Japan has almost linked up the territorial um, conquests that they've done from the from the seaborne invasion. And indeed, they've launched another two, it looks like. So Japan is really starting to push up against the Chinese. Uh, good, good for them, I guess. And that's pretty much all for the warring. Germany hasn't done anything with Czechoslovakia yet. I imagine that will be coming soon. And we should be seeing the fall of Republican Spain here pretty darn quickly. <clears throat> there we go. I, that should be it for Republican Spain. The Treaty of Barcelona, Nationalist Spain took seven states. Republican Spain was annexed in 482 equipment was seized by the nationalists. With the surrender of the last Republican strongholds, the Spanish Civil War has come to an end. The nationalists stand victorious, and a new era has begun for Spain. The war-torn country has suffered greatly in the fighting, and there is much rebuilding to be done. No kidding, that was a fairly long entanglement. But, you know, it's good to see that the Spanish have uh, come through. Perhaps not the side we wanted, but I don't know if uh, communist Spain would have been any more friendly. We're almost to the point now with 
you know, the Spanish Civil War being done to where we could have sent uh, units to assist, but what can you do? Not much. We're sitting with 74 close air support vehicles in reserve, and that's getting awfully close to a nice round number like 100, where I would feel comfortable swapping over to strategic bombing. So that's good. I've started researching uh, infantry support weapons too as well, because hey, that seems like a good thing to have. Uh, the capital of the Republic of China, Nanjing, has been occupied by forces from the Empire of Japan. Despite fierce resistance from the walled city's Chinese defenders, Japanese troops managed to capture Zhongshao Gate and fought their way into the city. Sporadic gunfire can still be heard, and several fires are raging in different parts of the city, but most surviving Chinese forces have either withdrawn or been captured. Along with the capture of Shanghai, this is a significant victory for Japan in their war against China. Yes, indeed it is. Japan has almost linked up all of their landing sites and uh, taken away a... Have they taken away a large chunk? Yeah. A massive chunk of the Chinese eastern coastland, so... I mean, you know, China's probably more army-focused than navy, but you start losing that much coastline of your nation, and... Things aren't going to be going well. We've got some more trucks, so let's get them added. And uh, what do we got? Three left? Almost done. Almost done. Oh, we've got another one. Let's get you added in. And we got another one, so let's get you added in. Alright, let's slow things down a bit here. We're done training, so that means we got the last one there. That means this can get a name. The first Royal Canadian Corps. I like it. And you will be led by uh, General Thomas Victor Anderson. Lovely! So now we've got a core with a leader and troops and everything's looking pretty good what i'm gonna start doing now is exercising these guys now the exercise won't have any effect on our current standing regulars but all of these trained guys well they'll start getting a bit more experience which is good we want a well-trained army uh if we can't have a big one uh one thing i should talk about here. So, with naval deployment, um, you can select the target destination. So, you can either have the AI decide, you can choose a state to have it assigned to, or you can choose a fleet to have these ships join up with. So, what I'm going to do, Canada Fleet 1? I don't think that's a good name. Um, the Atlantic Squadron would be a better name. So the better Atlantic Squadron? You know what? No. We'll just... We'll merge these two guys together and form the uh, Atlantic Squadron. There we go. We, we can also, you know, assign a uh, leader to, and we might as well get Admiral H.T. Ballygorum here, who's got a spawning chance of plus 10. We'll put him in command. And now we can go back to our Ottawa Class 1 ships and say, hey, instead of just deploying to Nova Scotia, how about you deploy to the Atlantic Squadron? Now, I don't know if that'll deploy the destroyers to the Atlantic Squadron if the Atlantic Squadron is out patrolling, but it is a handy way to make sure certain ships go to certain squadrons that are in the same port. Uh, let's say if you've got a split between submarines and surface vessels, you'll probably want to keep your submarines submarine flotillas and your surface vessels going into surface vessel squadrons just makes sense to me uh, we are gonna need some new research and I think what was possibly some towed anti-air or anti-tank uh, I'd lean more towards anti-tank guns, actually. We should probably get those researched sooner than later. 
We've got no divisions training. That's okay. We'll build up a bit of a supply before I start getting going on the second. Um, infantry Corps, who will be, of course, because we've got the Royal Canadians. We don't want the Quebecers to feel left out. So we will also have the, uh, the Van Dues make an appearance. They'll be my second infantry corps. Why are you putting units on the border there, U.S.? You got me all nervous. You haven't gone fascist on me, have you? Good. Good neighbors. Yeah, sure, steal info from us. Um... What now? Well, once these guys finish training, we can, um... See it's slowly moving up here. You can see little ticks of it slowly, slowly, slowly gaining experience. Um, we got time. We got time to train them up. We might not have time to do the same with the Van Dues. It depends on the situation, obviously, in the front. But we're, <laughs> thankfully, we're not in a position where we have to absolutely throw our troops into the meat grinder. We can keep our troops back home training and send them out you know if need be first to england uh before we figure out where we're gonna put them that might not be the best for invading into north africa but you know i'm not gonna put them all in bermuda and say just wait it out we'll get there uh let's see the united states advocation for democracy is starting to affect our country Radio broadcast allows speeches from Franklin Delano Roosevelt to reach our people, and we've found many Canadians being attracted to the American way of life. Canada is no puppet, nor will we allow our politics to be dictated by the United States. However, we can't deny the uh, influence that American politics have on our country. But damn it, in our hearts, we'll always be Canadian. So we got some U.S. influence. We should probably look into what that entails. Um... And I think with this stuff done, yes, getting an extra research slot is, is a really good idea. But um, I think we're going to start going for some army effort, mainly because I want to get that 50% bonus on the land doctrine. So it's not going to take 280 days to research. Let's see if we can see where we're getting influenced by the U.S. anywhere. Or is that just a... Is that just a nice little event thing? Diplomacy with the U.S.? What?! Plus 20? America! I feel... I feel hurt! Plus 20, that's nothing, come on. <laughs> Probably should have been researching these a long time ago. Let's get construction one up. Oh, this has not been a very heartwarming recording break, has it? The Americans are influencing us and we love them, but they... They hardly know we're here. And I've been ignoring a very vital section <laughs> of research. Still, it's better to discover it in 38 than 39, and it's better to discover it in 39 than 40. So, we're not boned by any stretch of the imagination, and this is precisely why I picked Canada to do my first real run of the game. It's a brand new Paradox game. I don't understand it as well as I should. Canada, you're a forgiving country, and we're not going to lose because I was dumb. That's the most important part. So, on that note... Uh, how are our close air support vehicles looking? We're so close, so close to getting the swamp over to strategic bombers. I can taste it. And, um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. How's the training coming? Training's coming along nicely. It'll be nice to have a full core of regular troops ready and waiting for whatever the world throws at us. And I'm going to be back when something more exciting happens. See you in a bit. German demands for the Studenten territory in Czechoslovakia, which is home to a considerable German minority, have been intensified. 
At a summit held in Munich, Germany, Britain, France, and Italy sought to find a diplomatic solution to the so-called student crisis. Czechoslovakia was not invited to attend. An agreement was reached in which Germany annexes the Sudetenland, but will not pursue any further territorial gains in Europe. Mr. Chamberlain spoke to crowds in London. For the second time, a prime minister has returned from Germany bringing peace with honor. I believe it is peace for our time. No war this year, then. We've also got France and Britain announcing an alliance, calling upon the bonds forged during the Great War. France has requested a formal alliance with Britain, citing unspecified threats against the stability of Europe. I wonder who they're talking about. Today, the request was approved by British Parliament, and France has joined the Allies. And we have finished our uh, army effort, and because we had already researched motorized divisions, uh, we've got that bypassed. So we could go down into a mechanical effort if we wanted to to get a research penalty or a research bonus to um, motorized divisions, which would be good. We could jump right in. Oh no, we need aviation focus for close air support. In fact, uh, we can also get equipment and doctrine. Ooh, doctrine, doctrine. That would be good. We can get our army trained up proper like um what with you know new thoughts on how to charge trenches and things we're almost done the training once that's done we'll get started on the training or on the creation of the van dues uh i've also swapped production over to strategic bombers as you can see we've got one already so we're well on our way to bombing the crap out of germany um i've also shifted one factory away from infantry equipment and put one into light tank because we need a lot of those and we're not really getting them. We're slowly coming up on our factory in St. Lawrence. Our factory in Southern Ontario is done. So we're sitting at six now, which is good. Um, I'm almost tempted to get one more for steel. Because we, we're going to need steel, right? So I'm fine doing that now. And I mean, this has gone down to June instead of April, so it's still not great. But it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. So that's good. I just want to get these guys done and trained up. But let's go take a look over at Europe. We can see Czechoslovakia has been, you know pretty reduced most of their defensive fortifications in the hills have become German and uh, it's really only a matter of time before you know what I mean uh, what else is going on that's pretty much about it if we take a look around the world Italy's getting a little bit confused as to what to do in Africa um, we they did have a front line against the UK here but now that France is involved they're getting all silly uh, and they're pulling a lot of their units out of Ethiopia itself. So I don't know what the Italians are thinking for Africa, but that might be the easiest route and front line that opens up. Uh, we can... What kind of theorist can we get? We could get a military theorist? Or an air doctrine? I think a military theorist sounds just fine, which will get our army experience growing continually not by a lot but by a little bit so that'll be helpful later on once uh we start needing to upgrade our infantry units come on guys you're almost trained we can get there and uh it's yeah i mean it's nice that france has joined the allies that's incredibly helpful we can now see just what the heck is going to be going on um in this front and obviously both sides are digging in pretty heavily we can definitely see some armored units on the side of the Germans as well as a couple of mobilized or motorized divisions all of these guys are mobilized what am I talking about and France is just slamming people up on the border telling them to get ready to defend and train up so that's good to see uh, we've also got France fortifying the Italian border, which makes sense, and probably also why so many units from Italy, are or so many Italian units from Ethiopia and Northern Africa 
are coming up to the French front there. And as I was saying in my little strategic talk, that's going to be the border to push into. Uh, that's years away. Obviously, we need a war first before anything happens there. And way out in the east, Japan has almost strangled China from a shipping perspective. And they've almost got a border here with Hong Kong, so we're almost going to be able to see some Japanese units walking around. They're still having quite a time getting uh, inland, but they have taken Beijing, and I would imagine that's well defended now. So that's, that's the Japanese pushing in on China. Soon they'll be pushing into the Pacific, I imagine. And what else has got? Well, we can check out the French fleet. They got themselves an aircraft carrier. How lovely. Are our units done training yet? Not quite, but soon. Soon. I feel like I've said that quite a bit today. I'll continue to. Uh, basically, I'm just I'm killing time while these guys get trained up. It might take a little bit longer than I had initially thought. How's our research looking? Soon, uh, we'll probably shift over to anti-air. Although, I don't... Mm. Again, hoping the RAF takes care of things. Although, I don't know the state of things in Italy and what sort of fighter defenses the UK will have there. They'll have something. I don't know if it'll be enough. That's really the trick of it. Because <laughs> currently, our fighter forces are nowhere near what they should be. Of course, we might be able to snag some lend -Lease Spitfires or Hurricanes from the British and uh, train up a Canadian Air Corps that way. Speaking of, we've got four strategic bombers now. Look out. Canada's coming for you. Um... And we've almost got 12 destroyers, which is great. We got our... Oh, that's definitely not the window I was looking for. This is the one I was looking for. So, is there anything here we might... I mean, we might want to push ahead uh, into improved artillery. But... I think, instead, we should start going down the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine. So, right now, we've got Trench Warfare, and needless to say, we don't necessarily want to continue on just fighting in the trenches. But this is the route that the uh, Commonwealth armies take. We are going to be true to that. This has gone from 280 days to 99. That is much appreciated. That is going to give us a um, planning boost. So I'll be able to talk about that more in depth once we get a front line to actually use. And as tempting as it would be to draw a front line around New England and shift the Canadian Corps into that, I don't think that would end well. Speaking of, um, I've been spending some political power uh, improving relations with the United States. We're now at 114, which is better. Um, it looks like when you improve relations, it costs 10, 10 influence, political influence to start, and then it ticks uh, 0.2 off per day. It brings you up to, I'm going to say, 100, and then starts taking three back a month. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind, but 114, 125, that's pretty good. If we compare that to, say, our dear friends in England, um, you know, we like the Americans better than the British. Let's start improving relations with England as well. done? You're done! Okay, stop your exercising, because that's just useless attrition now. So we've got the full Royal Canadian Corps up to regular. That's great, great fun. Now it's time to start planning out for the Bandus. So what we're going to do is we're going to train blocks of four, and we're going to have three of them all going into uh, Quebec. And we got most of the infantry equipment up. That's great. We'll get the, those guys going, and that should get us the Vandus eventually. I don't necessarily think we need 
more than two, certainly not to start with. I think 48 uh, divisions of Canadian forces, if we can get that much at war start, into uh, North Africa will be more than enough to do what we need them to do, uh, especially with them being as well trained as they are, not that I wish to brag. And taking a look, one of the big problems we're going to run into initially with uh, stuff in North Africa is uh, probably, yeah, sure, why not, um, air support. So with our close air support, I think we'll be able to base them out of Malta before we take someplace like Tripoli or um, Benghazi or, is Benghazi even an airfield? There's no airfields in North Africa. Okay, well, moot point. France as an ally will be able to base our close air support out of Tunisia, and they'll be able to assist us there. And then our uh, strategic bombers, they're just going to be based out of uh, England and flying over into Germany that way. I don't think we'll necessarily really need to worry about strategically bombing Italy. Well, it would probably be an all right idea to get their production and down and hurt uh, for obvious reasons Germany's going to be the focus the thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move the 5th militia out actually we should move the troops out of Montreal as well and send them down into well, why not Toronto, actually pause that, take the train um, that way my Van Dues will be in Quebec just because that's the way it should be anyway for an episode of Hearts of Iron 4 with no warfare, I think it's gone on long enough for today. Um, we're getting close to war. Every day we get closer. I'm feeling more confident about Canada's military position. I'm still a little concerned with our economy, but that's something we can sort out while we fight, which is nice. So, on that note, I'm going to leave the episode here for today. So, how many times did I say so? Thumbs up if you have enjoyed today's episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, reasons, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.